who've got a LinkedIn profile at the moment. Those of you who have got LinkedIn profiles can start thinking about how to use it most effectively to get your job next year, your placement job, and over the next two, three years, use it to develop a powerful profile that will get you, uh, the headhunters come and recruiting agencies come to find you. If you do the job carefully, if you connect to a, low, a range of sources and you start liking some of the postings that come through to you, you start writing a few comments initially, and then eventually start writing your own articles based on the work you're doing here, in the not too, in within about a year to a year and a half, almost certainly you're going to discover the headhunters, the recruiting agencies, are going to start sending jobs your way. Use it carefully, and it will be very powerful for you. I mean, over the last two, yeah, I started doing a little bit of work on LinkedIn about three years ago. I've posted all of my conference presentations there as slides and videos where I got videos. And a year ago, yeah, this time last year, when we had a, a, a college away day <coughs> down no, two years ago, sorry. We were up at Mackinney having a college away day. And during the afternoon session, while Nick Antonopoulos, the dean, was sort of rounding off the day, I was perhaps a little rudely looking at my emails um, on my iPad. And suddenly this one pops out of the woodwork, uh, and that was an offer of a conference um, contribution for a commercial conference in the telecoms world. And it's now built up. There are now five organizations chasing me for different sorts of contributions at commercial conferences. And you can do the same if you start using LinkedIn carefully. Have all of you got Facebook uh, profiles? Right. What you need to do there is twofold. You need to go through your Facebook timeline and everything else to make sure there's nothing there that ruins your profile as a potential employee. All of those lovely photos that uh, quite a lot of uh, students put about what happens on a Friday night or a Saturday night or, or whatever are... are the sort of things that will actually get you fired. There are companies now in the HR department, the Human Resources Management Department, who actually go and look at their employees' Facebook pages and compare what's posted there with the reasons, for example, for absence. Now, they may have put in for three days absence because they got a ghastly gut rot and then there are five photos on Facebook saying, hey, look at me in my bear. This is a problem. Yeah, you paralytic outside a nightclub or in a nightclub, again, is not helpful to your profile. So clean up your Facebook profiles really carefully and then start developing your professional profile on LinkedIn. It will pay off in spades because there's lots of people out there, recruiting agencies, headhunters and so on, and you'll realise when you get a, a connect request with a li that little yellow um, professional LinkedIn um, badge against it. That means they've paid to have access to everything and everybody. And they can connect to everybody without difficulty. And they're the people who are going to be giving you, the, potentially looking at you for jobs. So build that carefully. Think about, once, if, for example, if you see at the end of middle of January and you've got into the 70% range, you might want to start thinking about putting your articles up there in the publication section. No other undergraduates in any other university, I, I suspect, are going to be doing that. Any of you who had good publications or good articles from Intro to Computer Science last year, from above 65%, put 
put them up there as publications. Because then in potential employers are going to see the quality of what you have done. Make sure it's visible that this was an article or an assignment and quote your exact grade. And I would advise not putting it up there for anything less than 65%, otherwise you might be embarrassing yourself. But this is a way that you can manage your profile and develop your portfolio. I mean, if you think about your colleagues in art and design, even before they come here, they've built up a portfolio of their art and what have you. You can start doing that now with the work you're doing here. And if, for example, next semester you get something real cool done in SAS, you can start publishing your SAS code there, perhaps. If you did anything cool last year in IDA, you might want to post your video up there. Talking of which, by the way, um, Mosin hasn't got round to it yet, but, it's his, but what I wanted to him to ask you is to, I want to be able to put up half a dozen or a dozen of those little videos that you produced last year, anything over 70%, and you know who, whether you got 70% or more for your video, I would like your permission to put those up on our, one of our websites about the sort of things that demonstrate, sorry, how you guys are learning SAS and teaching each other SAS and coming up with really cool stuff, but most importantly, being able to tell the story. I've got five up on the website for final year students. I really would like some of you to let me ha have your permission. I need it in writing, in an email, to say, yes, Richard, you can put mine up, and I'll then find it and pop it up there on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, as examples of first year fabulous stories about how they've do you've done data analysis in SAS about something interesting. So please, all of you, if you'd like me to do that, and you've got more than 70% or more for your video, let me know, and then I'll get that up there over the next couple of weeks. And again, that's something that you can then link to as another publication of yours. Something that shows how good you are at telling the story. Okay? Right, I'll see Group A upstairs in half an hour. Go have a good cup of tea, coffee or whatever.